Welcome to the Ada Lovelace campus at Durst headquarters and our online event, Quality of Life for the New Normality. Today we introduce our innovative Durst UVCR air disinfection solution. My name is Christoph Kamper, I'm CEO of the Durst Group. This event should have been taken place at the Lumen Museum for Mountain Photography, but given the COVID situation and the high interest, we decided to take the event online. We're very happy about the big interest and hope that you all will enjoy this presentation. We've been working now since months on this topic, and for us, it's the next COVID-related project after the Durst Community Masks. But first of all, let me briefly introduce who we are, who Durst is. You see that we have a long tradition in the development and production of systems and machines and have realized innovations in different areas over decades. Our expertise in the labs in manufacturing precision, UV technology, flow simulation and safety plays a central role in what we will be presenting to you now, solutions for the new normality. The new normality triggered by COVID pandemic is characterized by masks, distance rule and disinfections. Me and my employees are active worldwide and I can assure you that all people have to cope with the same restriction whether in their private or professional life. Accordingly, we need solutions that give us back some quality of life. The current situation will not change soon or fast. Even if a vaccine is found, COVID will have its successors and we will have it to face again. Let's look uh, at the main transmission path of COVID. Viruses are ingested via virus-containing fluid particles that are produced when breathing, coughing, speaking, or sneezing. Depending on the particle size, a distinction is made between droplets and aerosols. The risk of infection is especially high in closed, non-ventilated rooms. Even tiled windows hardly reduce the aerosol load in the room, as the example illustrates. Beside the main transmission path, the descent rate plays a central role. In closed, unventilated rooms, the sinking speed slows down and the particles move longer in the room. As a result, the viruses remain in the air longer. Here we see the difference between droplet and aerosols. In this context, I would like our lab manager, Klaus de Lueck, to join us. Klaus, how do these numbers come about and what do they mean? Thanks, Christoph. There are different definitions regarding the differentiation between droplets and aerosols, as well as their respective descent rate, which depends on many parameters. The figures we present here are based on our own calculations and measurements, and their core statement also corresponds to the findings of institutes worldwide. Thanks. The continuous exchange of air is suggested as a possible solution. The simplest way of it is to air every 10 minutes. The complex variation is an air conditioning system with intake and exhaust units, equipped with special filters. Klaus, how do you see this? Yes, but I can hardly imagine to air the room every 10 minutes in the winter time. And modern air conditioners are not installed in every building. Also, they are noisy and do not always correspond in their efficiency to the size of the room. Pure air circulation units have also been identified as particularly risky, which have led to super spreader events in Germany and the United States, for example. Another solution approach is using UV technology. 
it has been known for over 100 years that UV rays can kill viruses and bacteria. UV systems are used, among the other things, in the medical field for disinfection and even in the water purification process. How do you see this, Klaus? Yes, this is true. UV rays are a solution against the virus load. But in this topic, there are also some pretty important counter-arguments. UV rays are dangerous for humans. UV rays can form ozone. UV rays eliminate viruses only at a very close distance. And UV radiation should be contained in closed devices due to the harmful radiation load. Internally, we have discussed at length and looked at various solutions and possibilities in details, and now we would like to present you our approach. The Durst UVCR air disinfection system combine both solutions and effectively reduce infectious aerosols, viruses, and germs in indoor environments. Through an antiviral membrane, the room air is let into a closed system and irradiated with UVC light. The disinfected air is continuously released back into the room through an air outlet. So closed radiation protected chambers with high performance UVC modules in airflow optimized and mirror channels. We have generation of ozone free UVC radiation with a wavelength of 254 nanometers. We have suction nozzles over the entire surface on both sides of the system at the level of the aerosol origin. We have an antiviral coating of the membrane surface and a whisper quiet uh, noise with a maximum noise level of 25 dBA. As you can imagine, I have a couple of questions to this point. So first of all, uh, how do you optimize the airflow? The efficiency of disinfection depends on the UV irradiation dose. The dose can be controlled by increasing the irradiation power or by increasing the exposure time. This exposure time was uh, maximized by CF CFT or computational fluid dynamic simulations. Okay, thank you. And how do you manage uh, to keep it ozone free? Let me show you by using a diagram. Here you can see how easily oxygen molecules split up when irradiated with certain wavelengths. This creates ozone. And at the end, it cannot be completely avoided, even if many people think so. That's why we work at set certain wavelengths with additional filters. OK, thank you for the explanation. One last question. What does uh, whisper quiet mean, actually? Uh, for comparison, 35 dBA corresponds to the sound level of a ceiling fan. A 30 dBA would be whispering. And the sound level of uh, briefing is at 25 dBA. The concentration disturbance threshold is at 40 dBA, so with the UVCR we are as loud as a breath. Okay, thank you very much. One further question, Klaus. How do we test the efficiency? Uh, we have started with in-house test setups. We tested the efficiency of the UV sources in our lab using UV dosimeters. Flow calculations have also been made to ensure the optimal exposure time and to verify the volume flow. After we completed all calculations internally, the results are, of course, also verified uh, externally by an external lab. In our case, at the Laboratory for Medical Technology and Disinfectants in Germany. There, not only our measurements get confirmed and, if necessary, certified, but working with uh, pseudoviruses or so-called bacteriophages, also the real efficiency of the UVCR is measured. Okay, uh, so why fakes and not the real viruses? Uh, there are not enough high security laboratories to work with the real virus. Therefore, we work with bacterial fakes, which are also real viruses, but specialized in bacteria as host cells. This is a standard procedure in this field. Okay, uh, now we explained a lot, but what does this mean in real life? What, what is the efficiency in real life? Can you explain this please to us? Uh, let's take an example of four people uh, sitting at a table surrounded by a volume of 8 cubic meters. Each person inhales and exhales about 0.5 cubic meters of air per hour, which means a total of 2 cu cubic meters for four persons. We disinfect 12.5 times this volume, meaning 25 cubic meter in 15 minutes. Therefore, we disinfect 50 times the breathing volume of four persons meaning 100 cubic meters around the table of four in one hour. If this table is now located in a restaurant with a larger room, a constant mixing of the room air around the disinfection center takes place. 
whereby a reduction of the germs is achieved through the permanent release of purified air also outside the central zone. Basically, we can say that the UVCR unit represents a disinfection zone of 4 by 4 by 2.5 meters. Of course, the efficiency depends on many other factors such as temperature, airflow in the room, ceiling height, number of people, and so on. So it is not possible to make a generalized statement regarding square meters or volume size as many competitors do. That would be misleading. Okay, thank you. I know that we're still working on optimizing the systems and I know that we will put a calculator on the website. So please stay tuned as well to the website to the specifications we're putting up. Here you see our planned UVCR portfolio developed in the Durst Labs and 100% made in South Tyrol. The membrane with Hedge, as we know, an antiviral coating can be personalized in every imaginable way with our digital printing systems. Now let's move to the bar in the Durst headquarters and see the UVCR units operating in real life with real people. Back in the campus, you've seen the systems placed in the headquarters, the place where we live and work, where we also meet customers and partners, and very need to feel safe. Behind me, a few examples of meeting points in South Tyrol, which could be safer as well if equipped with our UVCR systems. The following examples show you how the Durst UVCR system can be beautifully integrated in different environments and architectural contexts. I really hope you are interested now in UVCR and we offer a first series of a limited edition for pre-order now. Within the next weeks we will make the whole portfolio available on the web store. The UVCR systems can obviously be seen live in our headquarters as well. To book an appointment please just send us an email to protection at doorsgroup.com. If you have further questions to me about our presentation or to Klaus and the technology behind, we open our channel on Mentimeter now. The channel will be open for the next half an hour and we will publish the answer to your questions in a separate video on our website. Thank you very much, stay safe and best regard from South Tyrol and from the Durst headquarters. Mm -hmm.